in the Son. He prayed to accept Jesus wow. Christ as his Savior. That's the most important thing that you can do. Be obedient to what God calls you to do. I believe God can use anybody. Thank you for joining Mercy Today. How do mercy and compassion break down barriers and change everything? How do they bring hope? Be inspired as our guests share about the life-changing, soul-impacting work through the ministry of Mercy, Inc. and its partners. Here's your host, Dr. Dan Pritchett. I don't know what you think about when you think of the word missionary, but sometimes I know we think about the guy with a Bible hacking his way through a remote jungle somewhere, or maybe gathering a group of African kids in a circle telling them about Jesus. Actually, that could be part of it, but there's a whole lot more to it than that. Building a medical clinic to help sick people, digging clean water wells so villagers don't get sick and die from the dirty water they're getting, teaching people how to read and write in their own language, or helping farmers have productive crops by providing the right kind of training and techniques, fertilizers that will help feed their families and even take their crops to market to create an income to sustain their lives. That's all part of the life of missionaries, and that's what mercy is all about, this and a whole lot more. Someone has to do the work. Someone has to build and maintain that hospital and the other structures, and one of those guys is in the studio with me right now. Really happy to welcome him. going to introduce him in just a moment. We're going to meet him and hear even more about how compassion changes everything. Today's episode is called Everybody Has a Role. I want to welcome you to the discussion here, invite you to pull up a chair and join us at the table. In studio today is Bud Lenker. Bud is one of those builder guys who leads teams to get the job done make sure things get built and maintained and all that goes with that. So Bud has invested a lot of time and talent in Haiti, and we're going to hear about that today. So again, today's episode is called Everybody Has a Role. Bud, it's good to meet you today for the first time, and thank you so much for coming into the studio for this show, and welcome to Mercy Today. Good to be here, Dan. Yeah, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to go to Haiti. Several people that we have on our show have been to Haiti and uh, planning, hoping, praying to be able to go again. Let's just start with this. Uh, Mercy Inc. is bringing humanitarian service to 20-some countries, and God seems to have given you a special heart for that little island out there in the Caribbean called Haiti. So I'd like for you to tell our listeners how that calling not what the work that you're doing yet. We'll get to that. But how did that calling occur in your life? Well, growing up in a parsonage in a pastor's home, I always read missionary stories. I was always excited about those. And when me and my wife got married, we talked about doing mission work, but way down the road when we were retired. Right, right. And in 2004, we sponsored a starfish kid through the child sponsorship program. And when one of the men in the church asked me to go on a construction team, the question came up, could I see my starfish kid mm. and, and student? And so my wife would write the missionary that was in charge of the program and say, what can Bud bring to our starfish kid? Yeah. And she would just write back every time, you need to come. <laughs> and this went on for a couple of months. And finally, as my wife says, she submitted to my authority <laughs> and agreed to go. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> a little tongue-in-cheek there, right? Yes. Yes. In 2005, we went to build the new seminary, start the construction of the new seminary building. Mm -hmm. And the last day of that trip, we got to go meet our starfish kid. Oh, wow. And it was in a rural community and pretty emotional. Sure. And so we get to meet him and... The missionary says, you need to be praying for your sponsors because they are praying for you. Mm -hmm. And he responded with, I don't know how to pray. I've never been to church. Mm -hmm. And thinking there was something missing in the translation, the missionary went and got the pastor. And through a conversation and telling about the story of Jesus, sitting on my knee in the sun, he prayed to accept Jesus wow. Christ as his Savior. What a thrill for you. And that totally changed our lives. Yes. Things that were important before uh, were not. Yeah. My wife and I fell in love with Haiti and the Haitian people yeah. and missions all around. 
I'm guessing that that experience with that boy on your knee confirmed God's call from some years prior. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yes. What was the boy's name? Do you remember? Jovenel. Okay. Of course you remember, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right. Wow, that's exciting. So, um, and it's all about everybody has a role as the name for the episode for today. And you have a role. And, you know, some people as missionaries or on teams, they're preachers or teachers or uh, they evangelists or church planters or disciple makers. So, but you go as a very, very important part of that team. So, what skills and experience has God given you to be a part of that team there in Haiti? All of my adult life, I've worked construction. Okay, yeah. And so, I've picked up a lot of individual <laughs> skills, electrical, plumbing, mm-hmm. uh, con- just general construction. And it's been interesting to see how God uses those. I've always thought that it was preachers that were missionaries. Right. That's the whole point. There's a role for everybody, right? So if I walk into a building that needs some repair, I have no idea what to do, like a lot of <laughs> preachers and and pastors, right? But you walk into a building, you say, I'm going to get right to that. I got the tools. I got the know-how. I know what uh, what needs to be done, and I'm going to do it. It's amazing how God equips us all uniquely. Yeah. yeah. Is it possible in the uh, in the span of time that even as you were growing up and getting an interest in construction and all that stuff, that God was right then planting in you the very tools, the very things that you would need to take that assignment to do that valuable work in Haiti? Absolutely. There you go. Doubt. Yeah. I want our listeners to know, too, that whatever work you're doing now or whatever activities or interests or hobbies or anything, God can use that, right? Because the title is Everybody has a role, whether it's somebody on uh, Wall Street or whether it's somebody on the farm or somebody in the medical field, whatever it is, there's there's a role for them. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So there you are working away at your project, whether you're hauling lumber or throwing a hammer or whatever it is you're doing. And you lead teams, too. So it's not just your you know hands-on building. What's going through your your heart and your mind as you're busy on that project? Well, interestingly enough, it used to kind of bother me that what I was doing wasn't effective. Mm. But as time went on, I came to realize that if I'm not doing these things, those pastors, evangelists can't do their job. Perfect. Yeah. That speaks to all of us. And God selects us and calls us and equips us and gifts us and then he sends us. But he doesn't send everybody to Haiti. He doesn't even necessarily send everybody away from their own community. But he does have a plan and a purpose for each of us. Would you affirm that? He plants us all on a mission field. Yeah, I, I see the big smile here in the studio. That's fantastic. So I don't want to leave that too soon. If you have something else that resonates when, when you're working on the project, you feel God's presence. You feel like I am in the right place doing the right thing with the right people. Absolutely. Yeah. I think anytime you're working, whatever the project is, and you're in the center of God's will, there's just a peace and a contentment about that. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So as we look at the skills that you have and the skills that others have, maybe not the preachers and the pastors, but other kinds of things, the trades or whatever, what are the kinds of things are needed in the Mercy Projects around the world? You know, what kinds of what kinds of people or what kind of occupations that maybe somebody's saying, well, I'm going to work and I come home and that's it, but maybe... I believe God can use anybody, yeah. irregardless of what the occupation is. Yeah. I took a team of electricians to Haiti one time, and none of them had ever been on a missions trip before. Mm. And it was exciting to see how God used them and how it impacted each one of them. Wow. So if anybody's thinking as they're listening to you talk, well, I've got my job and stuff, but you know, how could God use me? And you would say what? Go. <laughs> That's a pretty simple answer. Go. I think on our website, we've got to put up a sign-up sheet. If you want to go to Haiti or anywhere for that matter, get in touch. Yes. Let us know. We'll talk about air travel and talk about accommodations and whatever the person needs to know, right? Absolutely. And the first part is to have a willingness and a desire to be a part of what God's Obedient doing. Obedient to what God calls you to do. Absolutely. We're going to hear more from Bud right after the break, so don't go away. Do you or someone you love need assisted living but are afraid you could never afford the cost? Glasswater Creek of Plainfield is for you. If you income and Medicaid qualify, you can move into Glasswater Creek for a fraction of the cost of market rate assisted living. Glasswater Creek of Plainfield is a game changer, bringing an affordable assisted living option to the west side of Indianapolis. Schedule your visit today at glasswaterplainfield.com or by calling 317-839-5808. That's 317-839-5808. 
I'd like to give a big thank you to the Covenant Partners who make this show possible in the Indianapolis area. Thank you to the Ron Blue Trust, Wisdom for Wealth for Life. Find out more about this great partner on our website, mercytoday.global, and click on the Marketplace page. Here is Mercy, Inc. Executive Director Doug Hoffman with another Mercy Minute. Mercy wants to transform communities in sustainable ways through acts of compassion and sharing the gospel. We want to work together in and around in poverty areas, disaster, disease, areas that lead to people in total despair. But God often uses circumstances like we have right now with the COVID crisis going on to bring people to an everlasting hope and healing, that they're only going to find that in Jesus. And as we work with people, Mercy wants to open the doors of hopefulness in nations with partnerships. We want to do it with like-minded groups and organizations that work together really to provide clean water, food, aid to widows, literacy, orphans, medical help, those type of things in compassion as we work with people around the world. I'm Brad Swinford with Salem Concrete Paving. It's a privilege to partner with Mercy, Inc., who provides hope to people around the world by meeting critical needs and introducing people to Jesus. I know that through Mercy, Inc., I'm investing in God's kingdom as they spread the love and gospel of Christ around the world. So please join me in supporting Mercy, Inc. and Mercy Today Radio by praying or going to their website at mercytoday.global. Thank you. Welcome back. You are with Mercy Today radio show. You know, we're telling people about how compassion changes everything. I'm in studio today with Bud Lenker. We're going to wrap up our conversation, but uh, Bud uh, has a lot of hats with Mercy Inc. And one of my favorites is about the uh, Starfish Kids. It's a uh, child sponsorship program. And you can learn more about that another time, but I'm just kind of introducing Bud here. So the topic for today is everybody has a role. And so, Bud, when we left for the break, uh, we were talking about that whole issue of hearing or res- and responding to God's call. Can you, uh, can you refresh that for us and tell us what does that mean to you? When God puts a call upon your life and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, when you're obedient, when you're in the center of God's will— that's the only place in this world that you'll find contentment. Yeah. And I think what we want to say is that's kind of a, a neighbor word of the fruit of the Spirit. And so if a person is walking with the Lord and seeking to be obedient and asking God, just show me what you want me to do, part of the result of that is going to be love and joy and peace and patience. There's more to that list, but that's a, it's a pretty good uh, start, isn't it? And Absolutely. So day to day, when you're, whether you're in Haiti or at home, you're sensing that those that fruit of the spirit, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and you would say what to a person that's in uh, Seattle or Tallahassee or New York? What would you say to them if they think th- they might be being called to something? Be obedient and go, and that go may be where you work today. Mm. Be obedient and share what Jesus has done in in your life. Yeah. We all have a story of how God works in our lives. Yeah. I'm just thinking that reminds me of the Great Commission where Jesus said, go. That was that. That was the word. It's a pretty right? simple instruction. It pretty much is, yeah. And so you got that call. We've heard about that. And uh, you're still going and still doing. That's fantastic. So you had a run-in with the ground. And tell us about the, the tree story. In 2012, when we lived in Haiti, my wife and I served there. My job was maintenance and leading construction teams. And so I didn't know day to day uh, what my job was going to be. On this particular day, one of our trees was losing limbs and poking holes through the roof of the office. And so I'm up there with a chainsaw and a Just machete. doing your job, Just right? Just doing my job. Yeah. It's another um, day. And cut a limb and slipped and fell. Mm. And so... I fell 30 feet, face first, and while I'm falling, I remember thinking, this is going to hurt. Wow. So That's like two stories up. Yes. Right? So for about two seconds, I was a prophet. Yeah. Because it did. It, it hurt. It did come about. That was fulfilled. <laughs> yeah. 
So the Haitians that were working with me quickly rolled me over and mm. and my glasses had cut a gash on the bridge of my nose. And uh, so my eye sockets were quickly filling up with blood and my wife came from the office and she asked one of the Haitian men for his shirt. She picked out the cleanest shirt that was that mm. she saw to wipe the blood away and, and she's talking to me. Um, I'm kind of groggy at that time. And, and she says, well, where, what hurts the worst? And I said, well, my elbow. And we looked down, and the machete I'd been using had made contact with my elbow. Made and, contact. Can you describe that Yeah, that's that a nice a way bit? to put uh, cut Whacked elbow. off a hunk or what happened? <laughs> pretty, pretty good, good gouge in my elbow. Yeah. So there was a EMT-trained missionary that was there that quickly – did some triage and they didn't want to move me because of how far I'd fallen. And so they sent Boss File, one of our Haitian friends, to run to the wood shop and get a door to use as a, as a backboard. So they carefully moved me onto this door and went to pick it up and it started breaking in half. Mm. Well, that wasn't going to work. So he runs back and gets a, a metal door, <laughs> which was in the wood shop, and they used that for a backboard, and luckily my weight didn't break that one. But uh, they took me down to the Bethesda Medical Clinic on the compound there and did x-rays and realized that I had fractured my skull and oh, wow. had cuts in three or four places that needed sewing up. And, and uh, I'd been there many, many times working on various things, repairing x-ray machines, electrical, plumbing, different things over the years. And I'd watched them sew people up. And so I knew they didn't have mm. all the medicines that we have here. And one of those they didn't have was Novocaine. So I was preparing myself for what was coming when the doctor was going to sew me up. Yeah, bite on this stick. <laughs> yes, that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, my wife was thinking the same thing. So she's praying and the Haitian doctor comes in and reaches in his smock and takes out a vial of Novocaine and says, Americans are wimps. Mm. And I said, doctor, you can call me anything you want. Just shoot it up. Yeah. So now when God calls you to Haiti or somewhere else, you're kicking and screaming, right? Absolutely not. Yes. That's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's uh, being facetious because that's what I, when we get, we get uh, tough as we have those hardships with the pain and the challenge and the sacrifice and everything. And it is a matter of suffering at times. And for that, it was uh, it was physical for you. And you go back in a minute, wouldn't you, to Haiti? Right Absolutely now? in go. a minute. Perfect. So, Bud, I'm getting down to the last couple of questions. I'd like to ask you this. Um, how would you wrap it all up? So our theme was everybody has a role. What would you say about that? No matter where God has you today can be your mission field. Mm -hmm. He doesn't call everybody to go to Haiti or Africa or India, wherever, but he puts us all in a mission field. Yeah. And I think the number one thing is we have to be obedient yeah. to where he calls us and what he calls us to do. Yeah. To openly share the gospel to those that we come in contact right. with. That's what it's all about. That's what Mercy Inc. is all about around Absolutely. the world, every project. So, but one of the things we didn't get a chance to hear about is uh, your involvement and in the whole project of the Bethesda, uh, the medical clinic, is that the full name of it? Bethesda Medical Clinic yeah, yeah. and Dental Clinic. Okay, right. And so uh, the team is there and they're helping people and sick people are coming in and people with uh, tooth problems or physical problems. And, um, and what you have said is that uh, there's more to it than just helping to fix the body. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the day starts early. Uh, patients start showing up 435 in the morning. Really? Get a number. Eight o'clock, they have a devotional worship time, mm. and the gospel is clearly shared. Every patient is prayed over. Wow. Um, so the you're taking the medical need, but you're targeting the soul. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that is the most important part. Yeah. And Dr. Rob did, Rodney Baptiste, um, the leader of the Bethesda Clinic, um, what an amazing godly man. Mm. Never misses an opportunity to share Jesus. Yeah. So the talk around here is that uh, in our uh, show planning ahead of time, we'd like to have Dr. Rodney on 
uh, whether we send somebody to Haiti and hook up or maybe he can get on. Does he have a way to absolutely Zoom or internet. something? Or yeah. yeah, great. So our people can look forward to that. I'm anxious to talk to him too. At the, An amazing man of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, so I, I know I keep quoting Doug Hoffman, the executive director of Mercy, when I when I say that compassion really is a doorway to the soul. And uh, Doug has said, if a tummy is empty, they're not going to hear about your Jesus. That's right. They they can't. They can't care. They have to, to, you know, they have to care about their immediate need for themselves and they're in pain or their kids or their lack of food or whatever else. Yeah. Well, so. time, time, time and time again, Jesus healed. Yeah. Before he taught. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because those people had it's pretty it was good example to follow. I was going to say, you know, Israel back then was probably kind of like, in a lot of ways, you know, Haiti, Haiti now. Yeah, I always want to put together Haitians and <laughs> Haiti uh, in my words. So um, uh, another thing about you're a team leader, and when you said on the show that you take teams, you're a team leader. So. I've heard that some things happen on the uh, construction site sometimes. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, it's amazing how many of the old hymns are mm. have been translated yeah. into French and into Creole. Yeah. And many, many times on the job site, I will start singing an old hymn, and pretty soon you have Haitians over on one side of wow. the, the job site yeah. singing the same yeah. song in Creole. Wow. And what's really interesting, sometimes you'll get – Multiple parts singing in multiple languages. Oh, wow. And it it's, gives you a little you glimpse like of heaven. Harmonizing. Yes. And the same tune. Same tune. But different, different languages. Words. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> kind of makes me wonder what heaven's going to be like. Oh, my gosh. A little foretaste there. <laughs> Absolutely. So now these people that you take, uh, and there are Haitians that are working with you. Yes. There's an impact. There's a spiritual impact with those teams and the people that are working there. Oh, both ways, yeah, both yeah. the Haitians and the okay. Americans that we yeah. take. Yes. Yeah. Um, so many times the that interacting, that relational piece yeah. uh, becomes the, the most memorable part of the team of the trip when yeah. people come home. It's all about the relationships, which has opened the door by the humanitarian Absolutely. compassionate service. Beautiful model. So I heard that it doesn't take much for you to get started uh, telling somebody about Jesus. Is that true? You know, I used to be much shyer about it. Yeah. But um, it wasn't that long ago somebody was convinced me or told me that we all have a story. Mm, yeah. And what has God done in your life? Yeah. So if you're going to share Jesus, what has God done in your life? Right, right. Because he's working in all of our lives. Exactly. Yeah, I try to bring it out uh, with the people that I work with at my church, and uh, I say, I, I want to hear about what God has done in your life. Because in our neighborhood, in our community, people don't care about our church. They don't care about our Bible. They don't care about what they call our religion. That's right. Um, but if you can tell them how God's faithfulness has shown up and meant something in your life recently— that's irrefutable. Absolutely. And you can tell that with authority. And they say, well, I don't believe in God. It's okay. Here's It happened to me. You know, this is my experience of God's faithfulness. That's powerful. I remember my dad teaching me to drive in a 63 Datsun pickup oh with my. a three on the tree. Yeah, yeah. And uh, him telling me over and over again, check your mirrors, check your mirrors, check your mm. mirrors. And I've taken that to a spiritual point in my life. Mm. Check your mirrors. Wow. I what like has God that. done in your life? Has yeah. he been faith was he faithful back there? He's the same God today as he was wow. then. That's beautiful. Check your mirrors. Our listeners can grab that and use it. Right. What's God doing? And if he has been faithful in the past, he's going to be faithful Absolutely. even when he calls you out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. Even if he invites you to come go someplace else, either geographically or yep. Out of your comfort zone. Yep. Yeah, he's he's working. He's at work, right? Until the close of the age, and who knows when that will be. Yeah. Thanks, bud. It's been great to get to know you. I look forward to more shows with you. God is your good. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Okay, so in just the last few seconds here, speak to the listener and tell them what you want to say to them directly. Be obedient to what God calls you to do. That's number one. To me, that's the most important thing that you can do. Be obedient to what God calls you to do. I think I hear a pattern. <laughs> be keep, obedient yes. to what God calls you to do. No matter what. Be right? obedient to what God calls you to do. Yeah, even <laughs> if it costs you a little pain. Yes. So, folks, we're going to wrap this up, but I want you to, to know that you can go to our website and hear this show again and all of them. Go to mercytoday.global. And we've been in studio with Bud Lenker with Mercy Inc. full-time now for yes. uh, a few short weeks, a month yes. or so, right? Yeah. Everybody has a role. So, But thank you so much for coming in today. God bless you. We come back for some more? Absolutely. My pleasure. Perfect. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more Mercy Today right after this. Here is Mercy Inc. Executive Director Doug Hoffman with another Mercy Minute. One of my favorite projects that we have going is Shalom Africa. That is a program that we, we reach across the middle part of Africa, and we're working in rural villages that are needing help in agriculture development. They're needing help around reading and writing. They're needing the help of understanding who Jesus is. And so Shalom Africa is a program built to be able to work with local leaders in those communities to transform them, to empower them, to mentor people, on how to raise better crops, how to be able to take their crops to market, how to look at how do I vertically integrate my farm, and I might be raising maize and grinding feed to be able to feed to my chickens, and then sell the eggs. That's the desire of Mercy in Shalom, Africa. This is Doug Hoffman. Executive Director for Mercy, Inc. I want to thank you for listening to Mercy Today. I'm really glad to have had Bud Lenker in studio today. The topic was everybody has a role. So, listener, if you have questions about anything, even the Bible stuff or the obedience or hearing God's call or anything about Mercy or about our radio show, go to our website, mercytoday.global. Uh, connect with us. Fill out form and uh, we'd be happy to uh, communicate with you and lots of things going on. I want to thank you for listening today. This is Mercy Today and we are telling the story of how compassion changes everything. I'm your host Dr. Dan Critchett saying goodbye for now and until next time may God help you be a part of what he's doing in our world today. So join us at the table again. Find out where in the world we'll be going next Find all of our shows and a whole lot more on our website, mercytoday.global. God bless you and goodbye for now.